In today's message, we're going to talk about something that affects each and every one of us at some point in our lives. The failure matrix. It's that feeling of being stuck, of constantly falling short, of not living up to our own expectations or the expectations of others. It's a frustrating and demoralizing place to be in, and it can seem like there's no way out. But I'm here to tell you that you are not alone. I've been there myself, and I know firsthand how it can feel like you're trapped in a never-ending cycle of failure. But I also know that there is a way out, and that's what we're going to be discussing today. I've spent decades studying and learning from some of the most successful people in the world, and I've discovered that there are specific strategies and mindsets that can help us break free from the failure matrix and achieve our goals and dreams. And in this video, I'm going to share with you five of those strategies. So if you're tired of feeling like a failure, if you're ready to turn things around and start living a life of success and fulfillment, then I invite you to keep watching. Because by the end of this video, you'll have the tools and knowledge to break free from the failure matrix and create the life you truly desire. So let's get started. The fifth way to get out of the failure matrix is to take more action. Now I know what you're thinking. Jim, that seems like a no-brainer. Of course, we should take more action if we want to succeed. But let me ask you this. How many of us truly take massive action towards our goals and dreams every single day? You see, the sad truth is that most people are living their lives on autopilot. They wake up, go to work, come home, watch TV, and go to bed only to repeat the same routine day after day. They have big dreams and aspirations, but they never take the necessary action to make them a reality. But let me tell you something, my friends. Success is not a game of chance. It is a game of action. And if you want to break free from the failure matrix and achieve your wildest dreams, you must be willing to take massive action every single day. Now, I understand that taking action can be scary. It means stepping out of your comfort zone, facing your fears, and risking failure. But let me tell you, the greatest risk you can take is not taking any risks at all. The greatest failure is not trying at all. So how can we take more action in our lives? The first step is to have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. You must have a burning desire, a deep hunger, and an unrelenting passion for your goals. Without a clear vision, you will lack the motivation and drive to take action. Next, you must have a plan. As the saying goes, a goal without a plan is just a wish. You must break down your big goals into smaller, actionable steps. This will not only make your goals more manageable, but also give you a roadmap to follow. But having a vision and a plan is not enough. You must also have the discipline and commitment to take action every single day. This means showing up, even when you don't feel like it. It means pushing through the obstacles and challenges that will inevitably come your way. And let me tell you, my friends, there will be obstacles. There will be setbacks and failures. But it's not about how many times you fall. It's about how many times you get back up. It's about having the resilience and determination to keep moving forward no matter what. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have the time to take massive action towards my goals. I have a job, a family, and other responsibilities. But let me ask you this. How much time do you spend scrolling through social media or binge-watching Netflix? How much time do you waste on activities that do not bring you closer to your goals? The truth is, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. It's not about having more time. It's about making the most of the time we have. It's about being intentional with our actions and prioritizing what truly matters. And here's the thing, my friends. Taking massive action not only brings us closer to our goals, but it also builds momentum. The more action we take, the more we accomplish, and the more motivated we become. It's a positive cycle that propels us towards success. But let me also remind you that taking action is not just about achieving external success. It's also about personal growth and development. 
Every time we take action, we learn something new. We gain new skills, and we become better versions of ourselves. So, my friends, I urge you to take more action towards your goals and dreams. Make a commitment to yourself today that you will no longer settle for a life of mediocrity, that you will no longer let fear hold you back from your true potential. The fourth way to get out of the failure matrix is to surround yourself with positive influences. Some of you may be thinking, Jim, that sounds too simple. How can surrounding myself with positive influences help me get out of the failure matrix? Well, my friends, let me tell you, it is not as simple as it sounds, but it is one of the most powerful tools you can use to change your life for the better. We are all products of our environment, the people we surround ourselves with, the books we read, the shows we watch, the conversations we have. All of these things shape our thoughts and beliefs. And as we all know, our thoughts and beliefs are what ultimately determine our actions and results in life. So if you want to get out of the failure matrix, you need to start by surrounding yourself with positive influences. Now, what do I mean by positive influences? I am talking about people who uplift you, inspire you, and motivate you to become the best version of yourself. People who have achieved success in their own lives and are willing to share their knowledge and wisdom with you. You see, success is not a solo journey. It is a team effort. And if you want to be successful, you need to surround yourself with a team of positive, like-minded individuals who will support and encourage you on your journey. But let me warn you, this is not an easy task. It requires you to be intentional and selective about the people you allow into your inner circle. You need to be mindful of the energy and influence that others bring into your life. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So, if you want to change your life, you need to change the people you surround yourself with. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what about my family and friends? I can't just cut them out of my life. And you are absolutely right. I am not saying that you should cut off your family and friends. What I am saying is that you need to be mindful of their influence on you. You need to set boundaries and limit your exposure to negative influences. Surrounding yourself with positive influences also means being intentional about the content you consume. We live in a world where we are bombarded with negative news, gossip, and drama. It is easy to get caught up in all of that. But if you want to get out of the failure matrix, you need to be selective about the information you allow into your mind. Instead of watching the news, read a book that will educate and inspire you. Instead of scrolling through social media, listen to a podcast or watch a TED Talk that will challenge your thinking and help you grow. The content we consume has a significant impact on our mindset and outlook on life. So, choose wisely. Another aspect of surrounding yourself with positive influences is being aware of your own thoughts and self-talk. We are our own worst critics, and often we are the ones holding ourselves back from success. So it is crucial to surround yourself with positive self-talk and affirmations. Remind yourself daily of your strengths, your goals, and your potential. Surround yourself with positive reminders of who you are and who you want to become. But it is not just about surrounding yourself with positive influences. It is also about being a positive influence on others. We all have the power to influence those around us, whether it is our family, friends, colleagues, or even strangers. So use your influence for good. Be the person who lifts others up, who encourages and supports them on their journey. You never know whose life you may change by being a positive influence. My friends, surrounding yourself with positive influences is not a one-time task. It is an ongoing process. As you grow and evolve, so will the people you surround yourself with. And that is a good thing. It means you are constantly seeking out new knowledge, new perspectives, and new experiences. The third way to get out of the failure matrix is by learning from your mistakes. So why would we want to focus on our mistakes? Isn't it better to just forget about them and move on? Well, my friends, 
I am here to tell you that our mistakes are some of the greatest teachers we will ever have. They hold valuable lessons that can help us grow and become better versions of ourselves. Think about it. Every successful person you know has made mistakes. In fact, they have probably made more mistakes than the average person. But what sets them apart is that they didn't let those mistakes define them. Instead, they used them as stepping stones to reach their goals and achieve their dreams. So, how can we learn from our mistakes? The first step is to take responsibility for them. It is so easy to blame others or external factors for our failures. But the truth is, we are the ones in control of our own lives. When we take responsibility for our mistakes, we are taking back that control and giving ourselves the power to change and improve. Next, we must reflect on our mistakes. This means taking the time to really think about what went wrong and why. What were the circumstances that led to the mistake? What could we have done differently? This reflection allows us to gain a deeper understanding of our actions and helps us identify patterns that may be holding us back. Once we have reflected on our mistakes, it is important to learn from them. This means taking the lessons we have gained and applying them to our future endeavors. As the saying goes, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If we want to break free from the failure matrix, we must be willing to learn from our mistakes and make changes accordingly. Learning from our mistakes also means being open to feedback. It can be hard to hear criticism, especially when it is about something we have done wrong. But feedback is crucial for growth and improvement. It allows us to see things from a different perspective and identify areas where we can improve. Another important aspect of learning from our mistakes is to not dwell on them. It is natural to feel disappointment or even shame when we make a mistake, but we cannot let those feelings consume us. We must acknowledge them and then let them go. Dwelling on our mistakes only holds us back and prevents us from moving forward. My friends, learning from our mistakes is not always easy. It takes humility, self-reflection, and a willingness to change. But the rewards are worth it. When we learn from our mistakes, we become better, stronger, and more resilient individuals. Now, I want to share with you a personal story about how I learned from my mistakes. Many years ago, I was struggling in my business. I had made some poor decisions that led to financial difficulties and I was on the brink of failure. I could have given up and let my mistakes define me, but instead, I took responsibility for my actions and reflected on what I could have done differently. Through this reflection, I realized that I lacked discipline and focus. I was easily distracted and was not putting in the necessary work to achieve success. So I made a conscious effort to change my habits and become more disciplined. I also sought out mentors and surrounded myself with successful individuals who could guide me and hold me accountable. Through this process, I not only turned my business around, but I also learned valuable lessons that have stayed with me throughout my life. I learned the importance of discipline, focus, and seeking guidance from those who have already achieved success. And most importantly, I learned that mistakes do not define us, but how we handle them does. The number two way to get out of the failure matrix is by setting clear goals. We all have goals and dreams, but how many of us actually take the time to set clear, specific goals? It is easy to say that we want to be successful or we want to be happy, but what does that really mean? Without clear goals, we are like ships without a destination, drifting aimlessly in the sea. It is only when we set our sights on a specific destination that we can navigate towards it and reach our desired outcome. So why is it that so many of us fail to set clear goals? One reason is that we are afraid of failure. We are afraid that if we set a specific goal and don't achieve it, we will feel like a failure. But I am here to tell you that failure is not something to be feared. Failure is simply feedback. It is an opportunity to learn and grow. As the saying goes, if you're not failing, you're not trying hard enough. Another reason we fail to set clear goals 
is that we are afraid of success. Yes, you heard me right. We are afraid of success because with success comes responsibility and change. We fear that we may not be able to handle the success and the expectations that come with it. But I want to tell you that you are capable of achieving anything you set your mind to. You have unlimited potential within you, and it is up to you to tap into it. Now let's talk about how to set clear goals. The first step is to have a vision. What is it that you want to achieve? What does success look like to you? Take some time to really think about this and visualize it. The more vivid and detailed your vision is, the more motivated you will be to work towards it. Next, write down your goals. There is power in writing things down. When you write your goals down, you are making a commitment to yourself. You are also creating a roadmap for yourself to follow. Be specific and make your goals measurable. For example, instead of saying, I want to be successful, say, I want to make $100,000 in the next year. Once you have written down your goals, break them down into smaller, achievable tasks. This will make your goals less overwhelming and more manageable. It will also give you a sense of progress as you complete each task. Now I want to share with you a powerful technique that I have used to achieve my own goals. It is called the SMRT method. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Realistic, and Time-Bound. Let me break it down for you. Specific. Your goals should be specific and clearly defined. Instead of saying, I want to lose weight, say, I want to lose 20 pounds in the next six months. Measurable. Your goals should be measurable so that you can track your progress. For example, instead of saying, I want to be a better public speaker, say, I want to give a 15-minute presentation without any notes in three months. Achievable. Your goals should be challenging but achievable. Don't set yourself up for failure by setting unrealistic goals. Start small and build upon your successes. Realistic. Your goals should be realistic based on your current circumstances and resources. It is important to dream big but also be practical. Time bound. Your goals should have a deadline. This will give you a sense of urgency and motivation to work towards your goals. Now I want to emphasize the importance of taking action towards your goals. It is not enough to just write them down and hope for the best. You must take consistent action towards your goals. Remember, success is not a one-time event. It is a result of daily habits and actions. And finally, I want to remind you that setbacks and obstacles are a part of the journey towards success. Don't let them discourage you or make you give up on your goals. Use them as motivation to keep pushing forward. As Winston Churchill once said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Now to the number one way to get out of the failure matrix. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart because I have seen far too many people fall victim to the grips of this matrix. But let me tell you, there is a way out. And it all starts with taking responsibility. You see, we live in a society where it is so easy to blame others for our failures. We blame our parents, our teachers, our bosses, our circumstances, and even the government. We have become experts at pointing fingers and making excuses. But here's the harsh truth. Blaming others will never get you out of the failure matrix. It will only keep you trapped in it. So what is this failure matrix? It is a state of mind where we believe that our circumstances control our lives. We believe that we are victims of our circumstances and there's nothing we can do about it. We get comfortable in our comfort zones and refuse to take risks or step out of our familiar routines. We settle for mediocrity and convince ourselves that this is all we are capable of achieving. But let me tell you, my friends, this is not the truth. The truth is that we are the creators of our own lives. We have the power to shape our destiny. And it all starts with taking responsibility. You see, when we take responsibility for our lives, we take back our power. We stop playing the victim and start becoming the hero of our own story. Now I know some of you may be thinking, 
But Jim, you don't understand my circumstances. You don't know the struggles I've been through. And you're right, I don't. But I do know that there have been countless individuals who have risen above their circumstances and achieved greatness. And they did it by taking responsibility. Let me share with you a story of a man named Nelson Mandela. He was born into poverty and spent 27 years in prison for fighting against apartheid in South Africa. Now, he could have easily blamed his circumstances and given up on his dreams, but instead he took responsibility for his life and his actions. He used his time in prison to educate himself and emerged as a powerful leader who helped end apartheid and became the first black president of South Africa. Now, if someone like Nelson Mandela can take responsibility for his life and create such a powerful impact, what's stopping us from doing the same? The answer is nothing. The only thing standing in our way is our own mindset. We have to shift our perspective from being victims to being the masters of our own fate. So how do we take responsibility? It starts with accepting that we are responsible for where we are in life. We may not be responsible for our circumstances, but we are responsible for how we respond to them. We have to stop blaming others and start taking ownership of our choices and actions. Next, we have to let go of our excuses. Excuses are just lies we tell ourselves to justify our lack of action. We have to stop making excuses and start taking action towards our goals. Remember, success is not a matter of luck or chance. It is a result of consistent action. We also have to be willing to step out of our comfort zones. Growth and success do not happen within our comfort zones. We have to be willing to take risks and try new things. Yes, it may be scary and uncomfortable, but that's where the magic happens. That's where we discover our true potential. And finally, we have to adopt a growth mindset. This means believing that we can learn and improve our skills and abilities. We have to be open to feedback and see failures as opportunities to learn and grow. A growth mindset allows us to take responsibility for our mistakes and use them as stepping stones towards success. My friends, I want to leave you with this. The failure matrix is not a place we have to stay in. We have the power to break free from its chains and create a life of our choosing. It all starts with taking responsibility. So I urge you to take ownership of your life, let go of your excuses, step out of your comfort zone, and adopt a growth mindset. The choice is yours, my friends. Thank you.